So let's talk about ogre hunting. Ogres, if you're not familiar, are opening gap reversals. And one of you guys gave me that name. I forget who, but I'll try to remember. <laughs> and uh, an opening gap reversal, and you're, you're trying to capture that reversal in the direction of the trend. You're not trying to capture a trend change. You're looking for a pullback type of pattern, and then you're looking for a gap to play that pullback on an intraday basis. Now, sometimes you might get a head start on a swing trade by trading one of these, but tonight we're just going to talk about just the day trade version of them. And one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately, not that I'm going anywhere, but just in case I get hit by a beer truck. <laughs> it's a friend of mine my age killed over not that long ago. It's like, oh, crap, I guess we're getting old, you know? Uh, but in case I get hit by a beer truck, I want to explain the process of of doing things. And, and that's going to help you out a lot more than just say, hey, look, I took this trade. Aren't you impressed? Okay, so all I'm doing, and I'm using Finviz. You could use StockJarts.com, I believe. Uh, I was talking with one of you guys uh, a couple days ago. You said uh, TOS has something that you might be able to use. I just like Finviz. It's kind of quick and dirty, and they were asking me for my scans. It's like, well, really, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just looking for for shorting. I'm looking for a gap up of 5%. Over 200K, for shorting, that probably should be really over 500K, maybe over a million. But I like to kind of see what's out there. Price over five. I'm going to show you one in just one second. That was around five, a little bit on the cheap side. But I want at least $5 a share. And on the upside, same sort of thing, except this would be a gap down. And this is really all there is to it. I can copy the link uh, to you if you want. And the only thing is you do need a more advanced, um, uh, you need the elite, I believe, through Finviz to make this work. If you if you use the the regular version that has all the ads and all on it, uh, it, there's a bit of a delay, so the ogres don't work right away. But you could certainly experiment with it and get used to it. And if you go to, on, the, on my website, there's a, a place in the middle of the screen toward the top. If you click on that, there's a link for Finviz. If you want to sign up for that, please use that link. Anyway, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to grab my opening gap reversal scan and show you what it produced on the 28th and walk you through these just real quick. So this one was kind of sideways and all over the place, and then it gapped higher. Now, this is at toward the end of the day, so a lot of the movement has already started or, or after, certainly after the open. But with the opening gap reversals, we're not trying to capture the burning dog, which is something that's going straight down. And and I'm sorry, for, for shorting, we don't want to try to short something that's going straight up. And for longs, we don't want to try to buy something that's going straight down, unless it's possibly an index, and in some cases, an ETF. Anyway, this one does look pretty good. This is what we're looking for, uh, a nice trend lower followed by pullback. But that's an ETF. This one's kind of all over the place. It might also be an ETF. Gush looks pretty good, as you can see. Nice trend lower followed by a pullback. But of course, that's an ETF. HTHT, HTHT would be what I call a burning dog. Okay, it's making new highs. We don't want to short something that's that's going up. I know some of the more aggressive day traders will short the parabolics, but I think that's a, a recipe for disaster. This one here, kind of all over the place and sideways. This one just kind of fell out of bed and went straight down, and then it went straight up. So there's nothing to trade there. This one kind of bottomed out. It looks like it's trying to go up. This one's all over the place. This one's making marginal new highs or multi-month highs and has been going sideways. This one looks okay. I'm not really too excited about it. It has a bit of a, a double bottom look to it, but it's okay. And I thought this one looked pretty darn good. And I did a little research because it was up so much. And come to find out it's a buyout, which is a merger. And sometimes if a stock gets bought out, it just will gap up and just chop around, chop around. That's exactly what it did initially. And I kind of forgot about it. And to my surprise, when I checked it tonight, it would have actually been a pretty good trade. But I just felt like a buyout wasn't, was, was a type of news that's not really good to play an opening gap reversal. But I guess price is king. So 
if you have any thoughts on, on playing something that's like a buyout for an opening gap reversal, let me know. And I'll show you this one in just one second. Once again, sideways action, nothing to trade there. This one's kind of was bottoming out, had a gap higher. And it's also was kind of cheap on the cheap side. This one, burning dog straight up. This VG was okay. And when I looked at my big charts, I kind of liked the way wind looked. So that's the one I ended up going with. So let's take a look at that. So longer term downtrend, and you could see in more recent times, it began to break down after making a little bit of a base. And this is like the first pullback after a base breakout. And then it gaps higher. And the idea with these open gap reversals is to capture this move back lower and hopefully it'll implode and take out the prior day's close. And then once that happens, just keep on keeping on. Now I did go back and look at this OAS right before I went live. That was the buyout. And it turns out that would have been a pretty good trade. My concern was that it would just chop around and chop around and chop around. I suppose I could have put in an alarm on this, alert on this, and then maybe get in and stop out at the high of the day. But it just I have I was a little leery of it because it was a buyout. And again, let me know if that's something you'll trade on like an opening gap reversal basis. Now, when I was talking with one of you guys a few days ago, you asked me a lot of questions about how to enter on these things. And it's tricky. You can't say I'm gonna wait 15 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour, an hour. You have to let them open and kind of get a feel for how they're working. And I was I was going, I went on to tell them that, look, if you're trying to learn the core methodology, let's stick with the core methodology, get that down pat, become successful with that trend following more on stuff, longer term trend trading, swing trading, the intermediate term trading, the money management, the psychology, all of this stuff. And then once you're successful with that, then kind of venture into this intraday stuff as the opportunities present itself. And I, I always stop short of saying the word day trading because I think intraday trend trading is the way to go where you're trying to capture a trend and ride it all day long. And, and you got to be a little careful because you can't get a little pregnant. And uh, I guess there's jokes I can make about that now, but uh, I better not. <laughs> but you can't get a little bit pregnant. You got to be careful not to, to get sucked into the screen, kind of like the moth to the flame. But anyway, just a little bit on entries. We did have the gap higher, as you can see, nice little gap higher in the stock. And then it did sell off a little bit. It tried to rally and then it made this dip. The second dip, I found myself thinking, aha, let's let's go after this thing. And luckily it reversed fairly quickly. And what you do in a situation like this is say, okay, well, it dipped below the open and it dipped below this opening range, the first 30 minutes of trading, but it really didn't go that far below, okay? It just went down about 15 or 20 cents. So it's like, you wanna wait for a, a point to where it looks like the hook is in. And I often say that people say, well, what do you mean the hook is in? Well, it's like people are trapped on the wrong side of the market. The market will do what it has to do to fool the most amount of people, as I often say, which I got from Linda Rasky. And then it will often do the obvious in an unobvious way. Well, in this case, it's it's the kind of the obvious thing, but it's gonna have a couple of fake outs to the upside first and cause a lot of pain. People who who forgot to buy the stock or wanted to buy the stock, all of a sudden it gets higher, they get excited, they rush in, the shorts are trying to fight them, and then it's a bit of a tug of war and, and it gets jerked around quite a bit. And then it's also market makers and stuff like that that helps to make this thing work. Anyway, in a case like this, when you're getting those little dips below the open, you need to be careful, obviously, and make sure you don't get sucked into that possible reversal. And I'm gonna show you one where I ended up entering late and I don't know why I got in so late. I wish I knew why. Maybe I was just waiting for confirmation, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then finally I couldn't stand it anymore. But in this case, you could see, you know, I was like, oh, I breathe a sigh of relief. This thing began to take off. And I was like, okay. And I almost forgot about it. And I said, cause I had a lot of other stuff going on. And I said, you know what, Dave, let's throw an alarm in on this one. And if it starts coming back in, let's go ahead and take this trade. Now, the other thing you can do, by the way, is you can 
actually put in a hard order, okay, maybe put a hard order down here somewhere, since especially once it rallies up a couple of points, because if it comes all the way back in, it may have stalled out. Now, I don't know my exact thinking at this point, but the alert went off and I was, I ended up buying some options on it and ended up out doing some outright shorting. And it just looked like it was beginning to implode. And so I was kind of anticipating that it would continue to implode. A safer, somewhat safer entry would have been to maybe wait for this opening range to be taken out. Now, in some cases, you know, maybe you could front run it a little bit if it rallies up quite a bit. You don't want to wait for it to come all the way back in. But as a general statement, you want to let it take out that opening range. So just 200 shares in this particular case. And I think I did it again, had some options on it. And I never did hit my initial profit target. So I ended up just exiting 200 shares market on close. And those are trades down there. As you can see, I didn't set the world on fire with this, but it made $332, which is much better than a poke in the eye. I should put much better in there. And, you know, who's counting? But that's uh, it's about 80 grand a year if you could do that every year, every day. It's kind of hard to believe it's that much, but I think 100 is 25,000. So nothing to sneeze at. And, and then sometimes I'm guilty of, um, Trading not to lose, as I've talked about before, where it's like, ah, it's only 100 bucks, who cares? Just sweep it under the rug. Well, 100 bucks here, 100 bucks there, begins to add up after a while. 200 bucks a day is what, 50 grand a year? It's kind of amazing when you think about it. All right, the next one was NIO. And this one was in a longer term downtrend, as you can see, but then it kind of made a cup and handle looking bottom. This is one of my old friends, one of the old really aggressive. I think it might be a Chinese stock, but it's definitely um, one of those car or car battery stocks or car stocks. Or there's some kind of buzz about it. But anyway, you can see it opened a gap down here. And I was looking for a big pop higher. And I know I shouldn't say hope, but what I was hoping for was for it to take out the Friday's close and keep on keeping on. And it almost did that. Well, it did have the gap lower and it did run down initially. And I wanted to grab a one minute chart to show you what it did. And when you're all excited and you're seeing these things, you gotta be careful not to get too caught up in that first little tick up or two. And you gotta give it a little bit of room. You can see in this case, it began to implode a little bit. So you don't do anything until it turns around and starts going back up. And I don't know why but for some reason, I got in pretty late on this one. So again, like in a case like this, notice that it did pretty much go straight down on the open. You had the little blip up, which could have trapped you in, and then it sold off. And then that's another case where it kind of hooks up, and, and I guess, so to speak, it hit, puts the hook in, you know, not to mix the metaphors. Anyway, so I didn't get in till right here. And I think... I, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't write it down in my journal, but I think what happened was I was so busy doing other things that it's really sort of take off. And I think I might have watched it open and implode a little bit and kind of forgot about it. But I did get in there and set a trailing stop. And I think I was looking for one point and it actually stopped me out before it hit the initial profit target on half. And then when I went to exit the other half, it started to rally a little bit. So I held on to it and kept the stop in place and then exited market on close. Now I made $62 <laughs> on the trade, but it's better than a poke in the eye. And I guess the lesson here is uh, one, I was looking for too much on the trade. 75 cents probably could have got that out, squeezed that out of the trade. Um, but it was squirrely. It was kind of all over the place and it wasn't a route higher. And that's the ultimate goal is just a route higher or a route lower with these things. But luckily, it didn't turn into a loss. I'll take the 62 bucks, and that's uh, 12 and a half grand a year, 13 grand a year. Better than the poke in the eye, right? <laughs> I know that's fuzzy math. And then I did play a little option trade on this, and I didn't set the world on fire, but I had 30 cents on the option or thereabouts which is 17% in one day. So that's better than the poking eye too. 
All right, any questions on the opening gap reversals? If you're a member of DaveLander.com, and a lot of you guys don't know this, so I'm going to repeat it again. If you look at the Q&A back when we used to do a lot of Q&A, and, and the reason we don't do them anymore, haven't done one in a while, is we, we've we been able to cover, cover everything pretty much live in Facebook. But uh, I guess if you had a lot of time, go in and read the Facebook posts. But if you wanted to get more on those open, open, opening gap reversals, easy for me to say, then uh, if you look under the q and I did a lot of presentations on that just because I get a whole bunch of questions on something like the opening gap reversal. 